All right, welcome back. Um, this is gonna be part whatever on the Lotus Lawn. I currently don't know off the top of my head, but it's gonna be in the video description. So, last time I did the transmission and all that. Had a few cold, cold spells. Didn't do a whole lot out here. Did a little piddly stuff here and there. Played with some instrument cluster stuff. Continued to try to psych myself up for this mess under here and haven't gotten too far with that. So just gonna do hopefully something small on the bench today or body work or something. Not 100% sure. A lot needs to get done. Um, so I'm gonna do probably the most logical thing here and draw something out of a hat. It took me a while to find a hat, but uh, here we go. Let's see. Uh, no thanks. Oh, uh, no thanks. Sorry, I only put one body work in here. Uh, no thanks. Yeah, that's an option. Consider about no. Ah, there we go. Let's build a diff brace. I like that. Okay, so what the heck do I mean by diff brace? So, on Lotus Salon and probably others, this is your rear differential housing. It takes a insert in here with ring gear, pinion all that and then you put your diff output flanges well the mounts that the differential is mounted to are soft rubber up here to the frame one on each side and then you have other braces from here forward to keep your pinion from moving up and down so the majority of the weight of this differential and the load is put on through these ears and this housing is actually a great representation of what happens if you do not have a diff brace. So, first you can see somebody's already repaired this. What commonly happens is these ears crack out, and that's kind of pretty normal on these. So, somebody re-welded it, but then this thing's also had such a hard life. It's had a crack there. It's had a crack here. It still even has a crack there. It's very hard to see. And then somebody who didn't know what they were doing when they pulled the spark broke all that. So as you can see, this thing was trash. So I had to buy a new one. So RD Enterprises had one on the shelf. So called them up, ordered it up, and it's over there. So here's my new to me. So since I am not made of money, or gold, and I really wish I was. I had to get a secondhand one, didn't get new. But this one's a lot better than mine. But it still had a little bit of damage that needed to be repaired, which was strange damage, but nothing too terrible. So the differential ears are still there. That's good. None of the uh, circlip areas are broken or cracked. Good. But mine had a weird spot where something punched through the case right here. So a good buddy of mine welded it up. Okay, so essentially what we're going to be doing here is where the diff mounts go. I don't remember if they go this way or this way. I think they go this way. We're trying to put bracing between each of these and the actual differential housing itself. So this won't flex and then ultimately crack. So, you could buy these if you don't want to spend several days making one. Buy one. That's what I would do. But, back to the whole not made of gold, and, you know, I have several tools at my disposal for this job. So, I'm going to use a little bit of angle iron I got. Clearance that. Pop two holes in there. 
filled two spacers to go where the bolts are, get longer bolts, put them in. Clearance for your uh, fill slash breather. Okay, the fill's back here. This is just a diff breather. While you're at it, make sure this is uh, clean and clear or else your diff seals are going to be oozy. All right, so there's a few thoughts I had for this and there's a few things you gotta overcome. One is when you look at it, from top down, here to here, doesn't line exactly up with this. So the off the shelf ones run a spacer where this bolt is. Most of them do not incorporate this bolt either. So they just run this bolt, which I suppose is sufficient because everybody's doing it, but I mean, we're gonna do things a little differently here. Uh, got a clearance for the diff breather. Got a clearance for this because I'm using quite a bit more substantial material than I think the off-the-shelf ones are made with. And then the other thing is if you go across here, straight edge, you run into the top of the diff housing, which most of them off-the-shelf have a nice bump here for that. Uh, this piece should be stiff enough that I could probably just grind and clearance that area and be all right. All right, mainly mindless uh, minutes of turning later. I have this, which give me enough material for uh, whatever spacers I need. And that fits perfectly in there. The hole's a little big because the material I had uh, had bigger hole than what I need, so it shouldn't really do anything. Um, I might just pack it with like a little bit of grease or something to keep water from turning this in one solid block of stuck in the future. So I think that should work out pretty good. Next step here, I gotta cut out where I have marked to start clearancing for the snout right there. So I'm gonna get on that with the Probably just basic angle grinder and then see how that goes All right now we are clearance that way Turn around check clearance right up here top of the pumpkin is Then clearance for the diff breather And then look too bad. Definitely need to pull a little bit off there. Uh, so, figure that out in a moment. Uh, clearance this out for the breather. Like that, and I'll be able to get a tool in there. All right, so clearance that out a little bit. I'm gonna shape this a little bit. And I did go the lazy ray. I popped just a little bit off that until it sits flush on here and there. So I'm gonna shape it up a little bit around these corners, make it look all nice. And then I'm going to uh, drill these holes. So in my infinite wisdom, I should probably mention you maybe wanna pop the holes in there first to make sure they're straight or lined up. Um, I'm going to cheat. I have transfer punches. And I'll show you that in a moment. So, I'm gonna shape this up a little bit more and see how it starts looking. So what these are, it's a set of punches that are completely round that have a sharp point on them. Put them through the hole and they'll mark the exact center of the hole on the other side of the piece that you want to drill. So, too big. So that's 3 8 punch. i to make sure this is where I want it to be. Get greasy. And then give it a quack. Do the other one. There 
and give it a whack as well. So now, left with a nice center mark on each side. Now I can drill. So I'm going to drill for 3 eighths of an inch. All right, I'm going to drill a pilot hole first, about eighth inch. When in doubt, lube it out. All right, well, if you know me, you know pretty much everything I drill has to be oversized so the hardware will fit in. Um, yeah, those uh, those um, transfer punches, they're like cheating. That's fantastic. So now I gotta figure out my depth of my uh, spacers and my location of them as well because uh, ain't no way I'm getting transfer punch and uh yeah it's gonna be a little difficult probably gonna involve some math so if i start smoking at the ear that's normal uh don't worry i'll figure it out eventually so uh yeah let me figure that out and Be hard to see, but first hole's right on. Second hole, uh, we're a little off, but should not uh, should not be too much of an issue. So yeah, looks actually a lot better than I thought it was going to end up. So a little score in the middle of uh, that black mark should be where I need to park this at. So I'm gonna do that quick and see how it goes. I don't have a good parting bit made or parting tool made yet. I need to grind one. I just use my regular tool that I pretty much use for everything. And I make it a little groove and I come in and I have a hacksaw with the blade turned around. And uh, yeah, it works. Probably want to stupider or dangerous things I've done, but works. All right, so the spacers fit in there nicely. And then time for that. Put my bolts in. I'm gonna have to just knock a little bit off the spacers more than likely, just to uh, make sure this sits flush up here. So now I gotta figure out how I'm going to clamp and or weld this in place. This one shouldn't be, no, oh, that one's gonna be the challenging one. This one's gonna be easy. This one I'll just be able to give it a tack from here and give it a few more tacks and then weld it in place. This one's gonna be a challenge. All right, so. I did try the grease thing, but I also mid, midway thought about using a magnet. So I put a magnet on it. Between the magnet and the grease, it stuck. So I uh, tacked it in. Wasn't exactly 100% the right place. So I kind of ground it a little bit. I don't want a little too aggressive, but uh, yeah, whatever. Probably just finish this up a little bit, clean it up, clean up some of the edges, paint it, and uh, call it a night. I think the thing looks pretty. Pretty decent. Everything lines up pretty well. And then, um, I just gotta get longer bolts that are shorter than these. Then uh, we're golden. So yeah, that's uh. So yeah, that's that. I think it looks pretty good for something that I made in an evening. Um, yeah, could have bought one. You probably might want to buy one unless you have everything that I have, and then you probably way ahead of me and just made one anyway. But if you enjoyed watching, please subscribe because uh, that helps out tremendously. Because, um, yeah, I some days I don't even know why I bother filming it because I would be done with this car if I didn't have to 
tow the camera around it all the time, but I do enjoy filming, so that's that. So, thanks for watching. Bye.